Neurological examination for a herniated disc. Sensory, motor, and reflex deficits may be present along specific nerve root distribution. For example, if you have decreased sensation at the top of the foot, that means the L5 nerve root is involved. And if you have weakness of extension of the big toe, that also indicates L5 nerve root deficit. But there is no reflex that you can test for L5 nerve root. For L4 nerve root, you will find decreased sensation on the medial side of the foot. Decrease patellar reflex. And weakness of those reflection of the ankle because the tibialis anterior is L4 and L5. And if the patient has decreased sensation on the lateral side of the foot, decrease ankle reflex. And weakness of plantar flexion of the foot. That means the patient have a deficit in S1 nerve root. You can actually predict how the MRI look like. So let's say the patient have L5 nerve root irritation. Then we can say if it is a posterolateral disc herniation, it will be at the level of L4, L5, and that will affect the L5 nerve root. If the patient has manifestation of S1 nerve root, then you can predict that the patient will have posterolateral disc herniation at L5, S1 level. Is there any other examination or a special test that can help us in diagnosing a disc herniation. The special test will be straight leg raise test. So if you elevate the painful limb, it will cause radicular limb pain. Check the degree of elevation that reproduces the pain. This maneuver stretches the sciatic nerve and produces pain or parathesia at between 35 to 70 degree of hip flexion. When the L5 S1 nerve roots are irritated by a disc herniation, the patient will have sciatica with positive straight leg raising, and that's called the tension sign. Those flexion of the foot while raising the leg will also stretch the sciatic nerve and cause more pain. How about the contralateral leg raise test? It is positive if elevation of the non-painful limb causes back and limb pain on the opposite side. What does it mean? It means that you have a sequestered or a large extruded herniated disc. The patient may have an axillary herniation, which is usually due to cephalad and medial migration of the disc fragment. During surgery, medial retraction becomes difficult and dangerous. Positive contralateral leg raise test is the most specific test for disc herniation. The straight leg raise test is the most sensitive test for success of the surgery. How about the femoral stretch test? It is a reverse of the straight leg raise test. So you try to do femoral nerve stretch or extension in a prone 
or lateral position will stretch the femoral nerve and will reproduce the pain in the L3 or L4 nerve root distribution. Is there any other hints which signal that the patient has a disc herniation? The patient will give a history of sciatica or radiculopathy. Leg pain is more than back pain. The pain is worse with sitting, sneezing, coughing, leaning forward, or with flexion. Painful lumbar flexion suggests discogenic etiology. The pain is better with rest and lying supine. Typically, pain that arises from a disc herniation will cause leg pain, tension sign, and a finding of neurologic deficit. Radicular pain is usually associated with prathesia, numbness, sensory changes, or weakness in a dermatomal distribution. The sensory testing could identify if there is a dermatomal pattern of sensory dysfunction, which will suggest that there is spinal nerve root problem. History is very important in the evaluation of the patient with low back pain. The history can help in establishing the differential diagnosis and it can guide the physician during his physical examination and also help in selecting the appropriate diagnostic test. Try to examine the sacroiliac joints. The Faber test is a provocative test to determine the presence of sacroiliac joint problem or not. How about Waddell signs? Waddell signs are controversial, and the presence of multiple Waddell signs on examination of the patient indicates a non-organic symptom etiology. Some of these signs are like overreaction, exaggeration, or tenderness to light touch, and if you distract the patient, the patient will give you a different response or to the patient will give pain response in non-anatomic distribution. We do not want to be judgmental or accusatory. For surgery to be successful, you need to have all three of these findings together. Positive straight leg raise test, positive disc herniation on an imaging study, usually the MRI, and there is some neurological findings. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.